Welcome to International Securities Exchange's podcast series. Facilitated by renowned educators, ISE podcasts are intended to teach beginning as well as seasoned investors the ins and outs of trading. To find an updated list of podcasts, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts. Please be sure to listen to our important message following this episode regarding the risks of investing in exchange-traded options. If you would like to sign up for one of our free 18-minute portfolio reviews where we discuss any positions with which you have or may be considering, go to our website, knowyouroptionsinc.com slash free, and someone will be in contact with you. Just put your information in there. Uh, if you have any other questions from me, uh, feel free to send me an email, Mike T at knowyouroptionsinc.com, Mike T at knowyouroptionsinc.com. And uh, after this webinar, even if you want to give us a call, um, sorry, Steve, I got to do it. I got to quote Billy Mays. Operators will be standing by. Uh, give us a call, 866-903-1822 at the end of this webinar. And uh, With that, I uh, just got a couple of things that uh, we'll just show as well. The ISC does a great job with their webinar series, folks. Uh, they provide a lot of education. And uh, with that, the best thing about this is that if you don't like it, they give you your money back. <laughs> so uh, they give you your money back because it's free. And uh, they do a great job. The ISC uh, bends over backwards with trying to provide free education. Uh, I know Dan Passarelli. I know Jack Crooks. And I think that just from... Uh, my years in the business and knowing these guys, I think that you're in for a great webinar uh, by stopping by on the 30th as well as the 7th. So on that note, I'm going to turn it back over to Mr. Steve Meisinger, and uh, thanks for listening, folks. So, Mike, what you really do is you manage risk. Is that correct? Bottom line, that's what it's all about. I, I, I'm not in the business of trying to predict the future. Uh, a great man once told me that he traded on the Philadelphia Exchange for less than 30 years. Uh, he actually would have one good month a year, and every other month he would break even. He never knew when that month would come, but he kept his focus on managing risk, and he did pretty well for himself. And, Mike, can you just go back and um, just talk about your offerings once again, and then we'll get to your, your questions you know, who are your typical clients and, and the people that are listening? How can they get a hold of you again? Uh, what you can do is uh, send me an email, Mike T at knowyouroptionsinc.com, uh, and get in contact with us. Uh, after this webinar is over in a few minutes, we will have some people at the office uh, working the phones. Uh, give us a call, 866-903-1822. That's toll free. And in terms of who our typical clients are, we're looking for clients that are for the long-term investments but are open to potentially using options as a, as a means to hedge things. Uh, if you have a long-term stock portfolio and you have overseas stocks and you believe in the stock, guess what? The, the currency risk is there and it's real. And so we help people hedging their long-term investments and while still trying to maintain some type of rate of return. If you just blindly go out and buy puts on everything known to man. It's not going to be a very efficient way of doing it in our opinion. Uh, so we try and customize and manage risk for uh, pretty much anyone interested in long-term investments. And on the short-term side of it, we do have some short-term things. And by all means, we're more than happy to talk with you on that. But primarily what we really specialize in at Know Your Options is the, the, the big picture for the long term. Thank you, Mike. Mike, I have a question from another Mike, and uh, he, his question is, could you show us the currency pair slide again, if you wouldn't mind? Not a problem. Yeah, with this, write these down, just kind of jot them down, uh, keep them somewhere close to your computer, so that way uh, you can have them there, uh, or you can memorize them as well. Uh, for me, one thing that I, I'm constantly looking at EUU, uh, that's one of the ones that I'm looking at all the time is the euro, and uh, that's one that uh, that's, re that's really a barometer for me in terms of uh, what I'm looking at to kind of see what's going on with things. Mike, as you keep that slide up, question for you. How do you know if balls are too high and premiums are too high? What do you do? I know you're, you're looking at the markets every day. How do you make those judgments? 
Typically, what we're looking to do in terms of determining whether vols are too high or whether premiums are too high, it just based upon the sentiment of the underlying in terms of what we would feel comfortable in terms of using a hedge. And let's say that, uh, just to kind of keep things simple, let's say that we wanted to just buy a put on XYZ stock, and we're looking at XYZ stock over the course of the next month, and uh, you know what, we believe that XYZ stock is looking pretty strong over the course of the next month, but volatility is just through the roof on it, let's say, in our opinion. How do we determine if it's too high or not? Are we willing to pay that insurance? And you know, typically with, um, with most of our clients' investments, we have some type of a hedge on, and if we feel that vol is too high, we'll still do something along the lines of a hedge. Maybe we'll modify it a little bit to change it to a spread to where we'll take some of the hedge off the table, so to speak, if we're still that confident in the stock. But in terms of when is it too high, usually it's in relation to what we think the underlying is going to do in that same time frame. Uh, we don't typically look at uh, charts of the implied volatility of the individual options. We usually base it more on our sentiment of the underlying. So it's more of a portfolio approach, Mike, the way you look Pretty at Pretty much, yes. Yeah. That's about the big picture. Very, very interesting. Um, how would you take uh, a position? Let's say that you were you sold that put in the euro. Um, what would make you change your mind? You know, maybe you said, "Okay, I I want to." Maybe you did it the worst possible time, two or three weeks ago, that all of a sudden the euro trading one forty, and everyone's predicting one fifty or one sixty, and you have a client that wants to be in, or for whatever reason. You do it at the most inopportune time. I've done it plenty of times in my trading career. So you put you sell put at 140, and then it drops down to 137 or 136. Uh, what would make you change your mind and actually hedge yourself some more from that point? Obviously, there's a lot of things you could have. The best thing would have been to buy a put, but let's just assume we were wrong and and uh, you sold the put at an inopportune time. Let me just hear a little bit about how you your course of action couple ways. Uh, what we're trying to do on this, on the short put side of it, uh, the initial objective, just because we have a little bit of a pullback on something, remember the, the first thing that we need to do is keep true to the initial objective or the trading rule, so to speak. Remember, we're bullish. We want to have long-term exposure on the euro, and we are bullish. So with that, the Euro goes up, euro goes down, euro stays the same. The premium stays in our pocket. However, we're going to be at a loss because of the fact that the euro is going down. So a couple of ways with which we would consider doing it. Uh, first way would be to, uh, the simplest way of doing it would be to do nothing. And with that being said, we have all, this money is cash secured. Assuming it's naked, the only way that we would do this is if we had it cash secured. So we would do nothing. And then at the end of the month, what we would do is we would take our loss and we would continue to do uh, the same thing the next month and we would actually sell another put. And then throughout time, the income with which we would take in from the cash secured puts, our hope would be for it to actually outweigh the loss that we took when we got in at the inopportune time. Uh, it's kind of like um, when, you're when, you're doing a cover when you're selling a put on a stock, and you let the stock get put to you. And then once you get put, you continue to sell covered calls on it once you're actually in the stock itself. We would kind of do a similar strategy to that uh, with the euro itself just because of the, or obviously we wouldn't get put to us, but we would just roll the put in such a way to where we would have the equivalency of that uh, just because of the fact that if we're going to do something like that on the euro, uh, we're going to want this exposure for the long term. Thank you for listening to our podcast. To find more podcasts on options, stocks, alternative markets, and market data, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts.